welcome to the Desk of Lady Ada. Hey everybody, welcome to another Desk of Lady Ada. It's me, Lady Ada. Got some little streaming to do tonight. We just saw an episode of Pseudo Random with Colin and his funky stereo light box. I don't know, go watch the video. How, how best can I explain it other than telling you just to go observe for your own? Uh, but now I'm, I'm back at home and it's time to do some electronics. I'm also doing streaming testing tonight, so we're broadcasting on YouTube, Ustream, YouTube Live, uh, sorry, not Ustream, Twitch, and Facebook Live. We don't Ustream on Ustream, right? Not for the no. Desk Lady Ada. Yeah, I'm, but it's more fun to be on Twitch, uh, Facebook Live, or YouTube, so that's really... Not since IBM bought it. Jeez, harsh flakes. Um, so um, tonight I was, well, I'm actually continuing on what I was working on last night, which is uh, doing some low power tests for the Feather 32 4 Now, the Feather wasn't designed to be super low power, um, but you can get pretty good low power performance out of it. So maybe let's um, see what we can do to get this little radio to uh, take a lot less current and how maybe how many packets we can transmit on a battery or something. And we'll be using uh, our, of course, awesome, hold on, I gotta, it's gonna complain why I unplug it, but I'm gonna unplug it anyways. The awesome, power monitor from Monsoon. This thing is so great. Thanks for letting me buy this thing. A um, little pricey, but worth it when you're doing a lot of power monitoring and you'll see the software, which I really like using, and it makes, makes my job a lot easier. I don't have like eight multimeters kicking around. Okay, so let's plug this back in, and let's go to the overhead, and I can show off what I got going here. Okay, so let's kind of get a mouse, but maybe I can sort of rearrange this a little bit. Okay, so I've got this little receiver, and what this does is it's actually just receiving packets. So it's, um, I just use this as a way to, you know, because my code looks for a response and stuff. So this is a little uh, packet receiver, and let me just power it off and power it back on. Okay, so it has an RFM 69 HCW, it's listening at 900 megahertz. So I've got this little antenna going on here too. Um, I'm not doing range tests, so I'm just, I'm just, I just have a, this feather with an OLED on top of it. Let me know when it receives packets. And here is my little victim. So this is the exact same board that's underneath here. It's a Feather 32U4, so it's an Atmega 32U4 8-bit processor. And uh, I have it powered over USB, and I'm gonna be measuring it without the battery attached because that way, you know, I have to, I measure the voltage regulator. It would be the same amount of current as through a battery because both would go through a three volt regulator. But I don't wanna measure what it, the charge of the battery, like this battery takes current to charge. I don't wanna measure that. I just wanna measure this whole circuit, which is the microcontroller and of course the little uh, radio on top of there. So well, this is not so exciting once you've seen it. So let's go to uh, computer cam. And that's what we're gonna actually have our party. Okay, so I've just loaded into here um, some demo code and all this code does is it waits till the serial console opens. This is kind of the code that's in the tutorial. Waits till the serial console open and then it just transmits packets. So here you go. It sends hello world zero. It says, okay, hello world one. It just keeps sending packets over and over again. And um, while that's happening, we can look at the power monitor and see the power draw. So this is the power monitor. And so what we're gonna basically be looking at a lot of. And I'm gonna turn on USB pass-through mode. So that means that it, um, you power, you can go through, you can have data and power go through and it'll measure just the power part for you. So let's go and then close and then run. Okay, so this is my current power draw. So as you can see, I've got, um, let me go back to here. And maybe let's, I wanna make sure I get Annoying. Hey, where are you? 
Okay, there you go. So these are the pulses where I transmit data. So when it's transmitting, it draws about 110, maybe a teeny bit more, it spikes a little bit, but basically 110 milliamps. And then um, normally, like kind of before and after transmitting, it looks like it draws about uh, 25 milliamps or so. That's maybe, yeah. So this is like 26 milliamps or so, and then it drops down to 11. So let's look at the code for what it's doing. Um, so this is the code. So basically when you start the loop, you wait for a second and then you transmit a packet and then you put the radio into receiver mode. Um, so I think that basically while it's in, you know, basically while the, the radio is getting ready to transmit, it draws a little bit more current. Let's get this down to, there you go. That's a little easier to read. So yeah, there's this double pulse and then it kind of draws a bunch of current. I think this is actually, maybe it goes into a sleep mode. Send with retry, I'm not sure exactly. Um, but let's try getting, so like you can't really do much about these pulses here, like the 110, 120 milliamp pulses. You kind of have to be okay with that because that's what it just takes to transmit. You can um, reduce your power level so instead of 20 dBm, let's try zero, um, which will give me five dBm. You can convert to microvolts, don't remember what it is. And what's nice is because I have the USB, the power monitor in pass-through mode, I can program it while also measuring the current. So it's kind of handy. Okay, so it's programmed. So now you can see when it uploads, uh, sorry, when it transmits data, it's only taking about 45 milliamps. So like, if you don't need to be that far from your device that you're transmitting data to, of course, pick the lowest power level. Okay, so that's one way to save power. Another thing you can do to save power is, right here, we delay between each packet, and while you're delaying, you really want to, well, sleep as much as possible. Um, but before we do that, since we're not receiving uh, any radio data at this time, we can put the radio to sleep. So, and then it will automatically wake up when we tell it to send. So let's try this. So right now we're drawing about like 28 milliamps on average, and then, you know, we have these spikes. Let's see what happens when we put the radio to sleep. So 28 and then spikes to like 48. This is 900 megahertz, which is legit. Okay, so as you can see, this actually makes a pretty big difference. Before it was 28 milliamps, and then it would spike up to 50. And now, because we put the radio into sleep mode for a lot of the time, you see it dropped down to about like 12 milliamps on average over here. So that's like a really big improvement in the, um, the sleeping current draw. But the radio basically, if you don't need to be in receive mode, you should tilt to turn off because receive mode looks like it takes about 10 milliamps. Okay, so that's a good start. Um, you still can't get rid of this, you know, uh, radio send with retry amount of current because again, it's, it depends on how big your packet is and if you want to get a response. Okay, but now we can put the radio to sleep, but let's try putting the chip to sleep. So we can do that by using um, our Adafruit Sleepy Dog Library. And um, that library is a library that kind of like implements all of the things you need to uh, put your chip to sleep. And um, I actually just got a really sweet pull request from Paul Stoffergen, which adds um, support for the TNC. But this is kind of like an all-in-one simple little like, look, you just want to sleep for like n seconds, it will let you do that. So all you have to do is call um, watchdog sleep and then the milliseconds of sleep time. So let's go, and you don't have to initialize anything because it just like, it does all the initialization when necessary. So instead of this delay 1000, we're gonna say watchdog sleep 1000. Okay, so let's compare. Right now, 
Let's drop this down to, that's fine. So we're drawing about 13 milliamps and then about 10 milliamps, 11 milliamps um, between transmits. So a good, a good amount, but not, you know, the best as possible. Let's see if we can get that lower. You can see the programming. Okay, so this makes actually a pretty big difference. So it looks like, you know, before, um, let's get this over like this. Before the packets get sent, you do have to turn on the radio for a little bit um, to, bring it, to bring it out of sleep. I'm assuming that's what this is. Or it could be that my, my watchdog isn't sleeping. Um, oh, you know what it is? I know what it is. It's actually USB. USB, once again. So I actually want to turn off serial. Because it, it's, it's, it was waking up, I think, due to um, USB traffic, I suspect. Let me try. It shouldn't be taking up even 11 milliamps. The only problem is then you, it, once you put this to sleep, the USB connection goes away. So you have to like manually restart it. Okay, so there you go. So taking away the USB connectivity, the uh, closing the serial console, because the USB is actually like, uh, the, the USB has interrupts involved and it actually was waking up the chip before it needed to. So now that we have the chip really going to sleep, um, you see it draws like very, very little current. And then there's a spike where it wakes up. It does the transmit of the data. And then I think this is it listening for the acknowledgement because this is like the transmit. It sends the data three times. I think this is configurable in the library, how many times to transmit. Um, I think three is a, probably a pretty good number to, you know, you're transmitting data and uh, three times or n times. And then you wait looks like about uh, 250 milliseconds for a reply. So you know that it was received. And then you go back to sleep. But the sleep, um, for the majority of the sleep time, you're drawing close to zero milliamps. So what's nice about this device is I can really zoom in. So now you see like the, the spikes of, of power are like way off the scale. But for the most part, we're drawing about 300 microamperes, about 0.3 milliamps. This is pretty good. This is pretty much as good as it's going to get, actually, for the 32U4 um, on the Feather um, 320, uh, on the Feather 32U4. The reason is that, like, if you just had the bare chip and there was no other accessories on there, you would probably be able to get it to under 100 microamperes. But while I was like trying to figure out like, you know, what was drawing a lot of power, I did, I don't have the board with me, but I did some experiments and I pulled off components. So it's not just the chip. First off, the, the, um, the radio itself does, even in sleep mode, it draws some current. Let me see if I can um, pull up, because I did some, I did take some notes for, let me go to, I took some screenshots when I did this. Okay, so the, there's a, a, a 100K, 100K divider on the feather um, from VBAT to an analog input to ground. And even though those use 200 kilo ohm resistors, two 100 kilo ohm resistors, you do the math, it's 25 um, microamperes from five volts. So. There's 25 microamperes that you're just losing just if you want to have the battery voltage measurement circuit. So that's that. Um, the MCP uh, 73831, which is the chip we use for battery charging, also has a quiescent current. I measured it at around 100, but let me see if they... Yeah, it looks like you're, you're going to have about um, up to 200 microamps just... Uh, oh, can you go to the copy? So this is the, the MCP73831. 
31 data sheet. So you can look at the supply current. So um, just having no battery installed, you're going to draw between 50 and 200 microamperes. So like it's, a hu it's actually kind of a huge amount. Eh, you know, it's a trade-off. It's like, do you want battery charging? I mean, I guess we could, we could have picked a battery charger that could go lower, but that's, it's hard to, you know, it has to actually like do analog digital conversion all the time. It's trying to figure out like if there's a battery attached, basically. Not analog digital conversion, but like a, there's a comparator and there's like a band gap that it has to uh, compare against. So when I, I measured with and without the battery charger, so that's about 100 microamperes. Um, USB, I did disable, and that saved me about 200 microamperes. So if I did take a um, 32 4 basic, so it doesn't have the radio on it, and I removed the US, I disabled USB, um, no 100K, 100K resistors, and I removed the battery charger, and I got down to 230 microamperes. And then, of course, there's the regulator, which is the AP2112K. And if you look at this, this also has a quiescent current. So the quiescent current is about 55 microamperes. So that's another chunk of change. So when we look at this 300 microamperes, um, let me do some calculations. So we basically have 300 and then subtract the uh, oops, sorry. Subtract 55 from the um, regulator. Oh, wrong side. 55 from the regulator, and then subtract um, 100 from the um, battery charger, and then another 25 from the voltage divider. So you get 120, and then there is some uh, quiescent current also. Even though you've put the radio into sleep mode, there is going to be some current draw on it. Let's see if we can look that up. All right, this is the SX1276, 1272. No, that's the, ooh, I don't remember. Let's look at the H. RFM H16, bah, RFM H69 HCW. Let's see if we can, it's, a, it's based on a Semtech chip. Um, let's see, yeah, it's 12 milliamps. We can only saw that about 20 milliamps while in receive mode. I mean, it's gonna be, a little tough to find it. I think it's probably um, about 50. Okay, it says, they say in sleep mode, it's only one microamp. I don't know if that's believable. I mean, it, it could be, the, that might be the chip without all the passives attached. Um, but either way, it sounds like without all the accessories, you could probably get to about 100 microamperes, which, which is pretty good. Um, there's also other peripherals that I might not be disabling. Um, like you could disable the analog digital converter and like, which I don't know if it's active, but disable it anyways. And um, there's a brownout detect. Actually the brownout detect is, draws quite a bit of current, probably about half of that um, 120 microamperes. Uh, let's see if. I think the brownout, I don't know if they tell you, maybe in the typical characteristics. For the brownout detect, I know that disabling brownout, um, because it's also a, a comparator and also has a, a band gap on and that you have to draw current for that. I think that's about 50 micrograms, but I'm not willing to remove the brown detect, because if you do that, you're more likely to get um, flash corruption um, during uh, power on, power off, because like you, as the voltage dips and gets right below, you know, the functional voltage of the chip, um, it will start jumping to arbitrary addresses. And if it jumps into the bootloader, it will, um, it could erase a page of flash, which 
does happen uh, and has happened to me, so I basically never turn off the brown detect. So given that I'm not willing to do that, um, I'm kind of, I think I'm kind of at my, my limit here of 120 is the, is the minimum current. If I desolder components in about 300 microamperes, if, uh, if I don't, and for this radio. But 300 microamperes is pretty good. So let's say you have a um, uh, 500 milliamp hour battery. So 500 milliamp hours is 50, 500,000 uh, microamp hours and divide that by, let's say 350. So that's a quiescent of, that allows you to run for like 1500 hours which is about two months. So is it like ultra super mega low power? No, but on a 500 milliamp hour battery, which is, which is fairly small, um, you could just be in sleep mode for about 60 days and then wake up whenever you want to, to transmit um, data. So that's kind of what I'm playing with. Do you want to talk about the range? Um, I don't have the range numbers off the top of my head. But they're in the the product page. I think we I think we put in some the range information. Yeah, and then you can measure. So just the listening part is it takes about three hundred and fifty milliseconds. Consume energy is one microamp hour. So you know it's, even when you transmit, it's for a very short amount of time. So 10 milliamps. So you can have yeah. So 50 out. Yeah, 50 hours of continuous, and then 60 days of sleep. So basically, if you were transmitting um, once an hour, you'd still be able to go like 45, 50 days, I think, on a battery, which is pretty good for like a, a thing that has built-in recharging and like all this accessory stuff. All right, that's my, that's my power fun. Woo. All right, you done? That's my desk, yeah, this is what, this is what I do. All right, Desk of Lady Eight is brought to you by you, the viewer. Please buy something at adafruit.com. We'll keep doing this. We had like five live streams today on five networks. There's, this is, we're, besides uh, Zuckerberg on stage with a drone, I think, I think we're the, the ones we're the liveiest put, putting out the most live content today. That's cool. All right. Well, people so are asking for low power data on the feather, so now you know. And the um, the M zero, I'm still I'm still hacking on, but I'll get there. I'll, I have to just figure out the registers to kick off the watchdog timer and stuff. All right. Tomorrow is show and tell. Show and tell. Ask an engineer, Ask an engineer. and probably something else. Yeah, maybe it's Tony or No and Pedro. Or if it has a camera on it, we'll probably be streaming from it soon. Okay. Oh, welcome, it's 10 o'clock. Welcome to 2016 year of the live stream. I know. Yeah. Year right. of the monsoon power monitor. That too. All right. All right. See Thanks, you all later. everybody. Later. <laughs>